You're watching Nigeria Vote on NN24, and we're talking about how Nigerians are going to vote and how they're even going to monitor the elections as the polling process goes on. Um, Wenga, I was talking before the break about the number of Nigerians that mm. have mobile phones. Mm. An estimated 87.3 million Nigerians have mm. them. But how many do you think are going to get the application, put it into use? Okay. Well, uh, three things. One is 7.3 million is the number of mobile phones. Uh, mm -hmm. Don't forget that some people carry two or three. Okay. That brings the number down a bit. And not all of those phones run on Jab, okay? which, is, which is what is required for this application to run. But apart from that, one of the, one of the key things that AI is interested in is if we get 10 million people, to use this application, it will make a statement that 10 million people are reporting. But what we know also is we're being realistic. The second point is people are a bit cynical in terms of how we can make sure our votes count. So mm -hmm. one of the things we've seen in sending out you know, messages to people that, oh, make your vote count, download with voter, is feedback has been, OK, uh, how exactly is my vote going to count when it has never counted before, before now? So there's a bit of cynicism. And what we know is that after the first election tomorrow, when people see you know how the reporting is very useful for the election you know electoral process then it's going to increase for next week and then it's going to increase again by by but what we see is fortunately we have elections all years now i mean every year in nigeria mm -hmm. we've got 2012 we've got 2013 we've got 2014 the different states that had their you know elections upturned so by 2015 one of the things i believe is that you know we'll have a lot of people using this application and the beautiful thing about this application is that it's not only used for monitoring elections it's useful for monitoring things about good governance. Yeah. I mean, but for now, we'll focus on monitoring the election. The election so. Now, he said that 10 million actually is ambitious. Yes. But in terms of a success, we're not looking for a success story at mm. 70 million. But mm. what would you think is the level, the number of Nigerians who download and use this that you guys would term as a success for the application? Well, w the target would be 1 million. And I'll tell you why one million. Because right now we are having like three million people on Facebook. So you know that gives us an idea of what our online community mm -hmm. is. You know. Now I want to also emphasize on something. You know, one of the impediments we have about this app is that we don't have that culture of mobile apps. We we'll actually say that this app is about to start the mobile app revolution in Nigeria. Prior to this, we never had mobile apps in that, that uh, had relevance in this kind of scale. Mm -hmm. So this is like the first real relevant mobile app in Nigeria. And you know, people's skepticism is more, not mostly on the app, it's on, not mostly on the election app, mm -hmm. but in mobile app in general, like mobile app, we have to install, to download. use, you know, download and everything, mm -hmm. you know, because right now we, if we had that mobile app culture, right, we should have been pushing this in through the app stores. But, you know, from what I have been tweeting earlier than this, you know, that the app store culture in in Africa is going to change. Mm -hmm. You know, we'll be dealing with middlemen. You know, like you see road sites, people say, come and install uh, Quran, Bible. Uh, you know, all those apps. Mm -hmm. That's how our, that, that, that's, that's the kind of uh, configuration of app stores we are going to have in okay. future. Mm -hmm. So right now. Just like the recharge cards. Yes, mm -hmm. exactly. So, you know, the middle, the, there'll be middlemen, our middle boys. That's mm -hmm. how it's going to be. Roadside, you know. So right now, uh, uh, the emphasis now is to now try and see how we can get to these people so that they are the ones that can now install these apps to the end users. Mm -hmm. You understand? So it's an impediment, but it's a challenge that we can overcome. Yeah. Okay. And time yeah. is no, it's not, has not, it's not on our side yeah. because we just started today. You understand? But I guess by 2015, we'll match up. But the thing is that we've started a revolution. And a lot of countries are already uh, 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 earmarking using this kind of uh, for, system for their own elections. For their own elections. Mm -hmm. Because this is, this is now on radio, it's now on TV, yes. it's now like you know, people are getting handing flyers out in public places and all that. But it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's, just, it's just the beginning. It's and just I, may not, I, mean, I may not want to use the word revolution mm -hmm. yet, mm -hmm. but honestly, I think we're onto something here. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. In terms of being onto something, we know how much social media has really mm -hmm. impacted this election. And it seems that the Independent National Electoral Commission uh -huh. has sort of joined the social media bandwagon. INEC has released a BB pin that yeah. if you have BB, yeah. 
you join them, you report irregularities, yeah. you tell them how voting is going in your um, in your area. What do you think this means, really? Okay, uh, let me start by saying they posted a tweet today to say that they can no longer accept Except. BlackBerry <laughs> contacts They've because it's full. full. Okay. And I, that was expected. But, you know, this this to me isn't about whether they're using a BlackBerry or, or whatever. I mean, there's even a movie on BlackBerry in Nigeria. I think BlackBerry mm -hmm. Baby, something like that. Yes. It, it explains the fact that this has gone a lot into our culture in terms of accepting technology and using it appropriately. You know, the fact that INEC has a, you know, BB pin is not, is, you know, it's probably not a big deal in itself, mm -hmm. but the fact that an organization that has so much bureaucracy mm -hmm. is now allowing one individual to hold a mobile phone, get information and respond in real time. Because when you're chatting on BBM, you don't go to your, you know, um, line officer to go and say, Oga, wait and go tell them. No, 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 you respond immediately. So that means that they're trusting somebody with enough information to respond. It's the same thing with tweets. Yes. So somebody sends a tweet at, at, at INEC Nigeria and says, oh, what, what's happening? And INEC Nigeria, the person in charge of the Twitter account, then responds. It means that we're definitely reducing all the bureaucracy of, you know, sending a letter to PO Box INEC and then waiting for the CFO to talk to the COO to talk to the mm -hmm. CIO before they can now post your response back to you. Mm -hmm. So this definitely reduces the gap. Because I'll tell you, if every BlackBerry contact, you know, everybody on the BlackBerry contact list of, of INEC is sending the same message to them, mm -hmm. they will take note, definitely. Unlike when you were supposed to call a mobile number and you call the number and it will tell you, all national trunks are busy. Please call <laughs> back later. So there are many channels. There's BlackBerry yeah. message. Uh, you know, there's BB. There's uh, there's Twitter. Twitter. There's, there's Facebook. Facebook there's there's the email. Mm -hmm. There's the website where you can fill a form. There are the mobile numbers, like nine or ten of them listed. Mm -hmm. And hey, there's Revolta. You can use send information to us, which will then you know escalate to them. So there, and beyond that, there's, there's so many opportunities now, so that there's no Nigerian that can be bold enough to give an excuse and say, hey, uh, I didn't have a way of you know, getting the report to somebody. Mm -hmm. I can, uh, sorry, I, I also want to see this as democratizing the uh, support process because okay. you know, that's the right word. Uh, on the, like, you know, the bureaucracy is usually the main obstacle. You understand, but now what they've done is go, you know, different channels, create different channels for people to use. It might not necessarily be the best, you know, option like the blackberries. It's actually not, but you know, the the fact that someone thought, okay, let's reach let's out, try. let's mm -hmm. try, you know, it could have been better. But to me, it's better than what we've seen yeah. in in a you long while. You don't even know who to talk to. You, do, mm -hmm. you don't even know uh, who to talk to. So we expect shortened response time, which is really key. Yeah. You understand? A shortened response time in 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 accepting whatever information or you know, being uh, reactive to whatever is being sent. So okay. it's, a, it's a good step. Mm -hmm. Now, in terms of accountability, because yeah. there are three elections scheduled, so yes. if something is a little bit off with maybe um, the April 2nd election, mm -hmm. it can be fine-tuned in time for the others. Yeah. But do you really think that INEC is going to take a look at this feedback that they're getting from the social media? Because all these things basically fall yeah. under social media and the advance of technology. Do you think INEC is really going to take a look at them and yeah. fine-tune based on the feedback they're getting from this segment of the voting population? I say, I say yes without any fear of being you know, quoted anywhere. Because what, what, what we've seen so far is a new INEC that is open. I mean, we, we didn't have INEC engage civil society organizations this easy in the past, at least not the ones led by young people. You know, and what we've seen now is, you know, we were in a meeting with INEC a few, few, few weeks ago and said to them, by the way, your Twitter account is quiet, is silent. You need to talk to people with Twitter. And between then and, you know, that was, that was I think, on a Wednesday. By Monday, the account was actively tweeting. Yes, we gave some support in one way or the other. But mm -hmm. the truth is, response was positive. And what I think would happen is, now, we, what we, like I said earlier, we have like a situation room where everything is brought together. And then, you know, like you distill everything and basically send actionable items to INEC. And what we've seen happen is the fact that during the Delta rerun, for example, there was so much feedback through people's, you know, posting tweets with, with a certain hashtag and all that. And that's the same thing. We've seen them improve the process over that period of time. Now they're using, you know, uh, modified open ballot system. So I expect that the one week between each election will be time for them to review the lessons learned 
and then be able to implement. And guess what? It means that when there's a report, when different people are writing reports for what you know what the election process was like, mm -hmm. it's going to be very easy to pick up the reports now because it. The Maybe figures 30 are there, percent the of data them is there. already on Twitter. Mm -hmm. When the Delta Iran elections were being, the results were being announced, people were tweeting as was being announced. Every polling unit will put up the results of the elections in each of those places. And it means that everyone there can see those results. And already, when you have information, there's so much power that you feel to question what is being fed to you later. So, for example, if you were in a polling unit where your party got three you know, votes, and then you see the final result, and your party had zero votes. Then you're going to ask a question, now, wait a second, I voted for this party, somebody mm -hmm. else did, three of us did, so what happened to the numbers? And that's, that's what can help, because our judicial system is waking up in terms of elections. We've seen Ekiti, we've seen Oshun, we've seen, you know, we've seen Edo, we've seen, you know, different states. So now the electorate, the people, the citizens themselves are now waking up. So when we have, you know, a judiciary that is awake, you know, a group of citizens are awake, and you have a, you know, a manager of the mm -hmm. process, INEC or INEC, that is awake, then we're beginning to forge institutional affiliation, and, and that makes a lot of sense. I know that our time is out, but I want you to give um, anybody watching the opportunity. What's the website? What's the process for them to go through to be part of this quote-unquote revolution? Well, go to eianigeria.org slash revoda, or you can simply go to revoda.org. There's a download button waiting for you there. Click on the download button. You choose your option if it's for BlackBerry or if it's for you know the lighter version for those who don't have a lot. You know, because access can be really tricky around here. Mm -hmm. But for those who want the full feature smart version, you you know you pick which one you choose. Install on your phone, set up your profile, and you're good to go. Emeka, anything? Well, um, something interesting just happened before we came in. Mm -hmm. uh, politicians who 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 are vying for this election wanted their their people to download this software so that they can report on their opponents who is trying to mm -hmm. rig the election. It's just to tell you that it's not only to protect our uh, votes of the voters, but even the politicians want to protect their interest. own vote, their <laughs> own vote. So, <laughs> so uh, this application is revolutionary and um, it's, 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 it's surely going to help in uh, making the process very transparent and right. Thank credible. you guys for being here today. Thank you for having us. Thank right. you very much. I've been talking to Bega Shesan, who is the Executive Director of Paradigm Initiative Nigeria and also a volunteer with the NGO Enough is Enough. And with him was Emeka Okoye, who is a mobile developer. They've been telling us about an application that allows Nigerians to actively participate and monitor the elections that are holding in the country. I'm Todu Lokwe Adelere. You've been watching Nigeria Votes. Thanks for joining us. Stay with NN24.